Okay, um, I'm going to show you how to do a tiered crown rib stitch hat. Okay, the entire thing is done rib stitch, but the way the um, wedges are going to keep decreasing down and you're going to keep knitting no matter what the wedges, you're going to get a tiered effect, okay? If you're doing the 96, you're going to need to start with a knit one, okay? So just keep that in mind, and that'll be in the written pattern, okay? So I've gone ahead and I've set up my 96 for um, myself, okay? And what that is, is you want to count over 22, and then your wedge is 24 pegs, and then 22 and your wedge is 24 and then do that and then do that and so it's all set up and at this point what we want to do is we want to start casting on okay and I'm going to use my anchor peg here all right so I'm going to do a double wrap cast on but you can do any cast on you like so we're going to go all the way around and you can either cast on 96. This one's 96, so you know, okay. So go ahead and pause the video, do your cast on, and then we're ready to get started. Okay, I have completed my cast on and what we want to do, but we're doing a 2x2 two two ribbing, okay. And after you do that, then you follow the pattern of purl two, knit two on here. So you know you're keeping up with a two by two ribbing. So you're you're basically going to be knitting two, purling two, and on this one we're going to knit one and then we're going to go purl two, knit two all the way around. Then you get to that last peg, you're going to knit it. I'm going to show you how to do the um, 96 version. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and knitted my first peg. At this point, I'm going to purl two, knit two. And the object is, is to have every single wedge pegs knit. They need to be a knit. All right. So that when you go in and you decrease, they are always going to be a knit. So as you can see, I knitted two, purled two, and then here's my knit two on the wedge peg. Okay, and you're going to do this all the way around. And the thing is, is the trick to this is the crown of the hat. So the bulk of the hat is this simple rib, two by two ribbing, okay? And um, you're going to do that for however many roll, rows that you want. Um, typically what I like to do is measure from the middle of the forehead all the way around the top of the head and to the nape of the neck. Take that measurement and divide it in half and that's how many inches you generally want to do. Um, if you want this to fold you do those exact inches because we're going to do the crown area um, and that's going to take up and allow you to do a fold. Okay. So um, for me, I think it ends up being like 12 inches or something like that is what I end up usually doing. But because of the rib stitch, it should have a spring to it. So this, this hat could probably make for about any size head. At this point, you want to um, continue the 2x2 two two all the way around. Just remember, your 2x2 two two is just a little off on your beginning and ending point. If you feel more comfortable starting over here, so it's a knit two, purl two straight out the gate, go for it. But your more typical starting point is going to set it off a little bit so that your first and last peg are the same thing. All right. But what you want to do is you want to do um, 10 inches or so, and I believe it ends up working to about nine rows per inch on the 3 8 inch gauge or the worsted weight. So if you do the math, you could be doing, say, 90 rows, okay? And um, again, that's up to you. I will provide a diagram in the written pattern so you have an idea of how many inches you want to do. But it's up to you to do the calculations and figure out how many 
um, rows you want to do. But I would say on the top of my head, if you're doing the 96 peg version, go ahead and do like 80 rows to start. Um, if you don't want it to fold, then you need to take that measurement and then you need to minus, um, I think, four inches. Yeah, you'll need to minus like four inches, okay, from that total, and then you'll do that if you don't want to fold up brim. But I find that fold up brims are really nice. And if you want, you can do a hemmed brim with this, just um, fold it back. But I just want a fold up brim. I don't even want to bother with a hemmed brim, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and do your two by two ribbing for 80 rows or however many rows it would take to do the inches that you want to be ready to do the crown because the crown is going to be the trick to this. The base of the hat is simple, okay? Two by two ribbing. Get you up to your several inches and then when we come back, we'll start working the crown, okay? As you can see, I've done my rows for the bulk of my hat. And I'm ready to start doing the special crown area with the rib stitch. So here is the main goal. You want to continue, no matter as you're decreasing, you want to continue knitting your wedge pegs all the time until you get down to your purl section here, just before your two knits right here. Okay, when you get to these, it's where it's going to change out. All right, you're going to be closing off the arch. So always keep in mind when I show you how to do this that you're going to always, no matter what, be knitting these two pegs on the wedges, okay, all the time, every time, until you get to, um, it looks like your last three, okay, and your last three will change up. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a wedge decrease. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shove all my wedges in one slot. Go ahead and move those straggling pegs to the wedge pegs. And the reason why you want to move those to the wedge pegs is the stitches go up under this. And so this column here, it'll go up under the column so that this, this strip here will always be smooth all the way to the top. All right, so that's the reason why you want to do that method. Okay, so now that we've done that, what you want to do, and you still want to continue to follow the process, so if you have a single purl, keep in mind that's a single purl. You may want to actually put a stitch marker on it if you um, are having trouble keeping up. So start off with a knit, and if you're doing the other version, it's going to be a purl. And you're going to work your way over to purl two, knit two, or knit two, purl two, depending on which size you're doing. Now it'll be a little different when you get to so knit two and then a purl, a single one, because you just decreased with a purl, and then you're going to knit two stitches together. You may have to knit one over the other. So knit one, and then the next one. Okay. And then knit the two together. So you want to continue that process following that all the way around and keeping up with what exactly you're doing. Okay, so I have a single purl on this side. Okay. And then at some point you'll be knitting six and then you'll be knitting um, so you're always keeping up with what you're changing over to here okay and if you okay so for instance we decreased and now we have a single purl on each side okay after you finish this row you do a regular row okay you just 
you consistently go in and knit those two together, knit the wedges, and purl the singles, okay? And then when you get to another decrease, you're going to be knitting these two, knitting these two, and knitting these two because you'll have decreased in. And then when you decrease in again, you'll be knitting just one on the outsides of the wedge pegs and still knitting the wedge pegs and one. And you can kind of see the pattern going every time you do a decrease. Okay, well, every time you do a decrease row, then you will do a straight normal row where you're doing the knit one and purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, and then do the patterning, but keeping up with your changes that are happening around the wedge pegs, okay? And um, that concept should start to kind of give you an understanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'm going to finish the row, and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, doing a straight up row, and then what it looks like the next time you decrease, okay? so that you have an idea of what the patterning is, but that's generally what I'm going about doing. And it's going to stop, that patterning is going to stop when I start hitting these last couple of decrease areas through here. Now what you want to do, I finished the row with my decreases, and now you want to knit that first peg, purl two, knit two, until you start getting to your wedges, then it'll be purl one and then knit two, okay? or um, might be a little different if you're doing the other, but you'll get the idea of generally what I'm going about and doing. Okay, so a single purl, because you've decreased away a purl, and then knit two, and then you decreased away a purl, so it's a single purl now. And then you knit two, okay? So you continue that all the way around, just one row. And then we'll decrease again, and I'll show you how to go about doing that and what that changes up then, okay? Okay, so we've hit our next decrease. You want to move those wedges in one slot. Then move those straggling stitches to the wedge pegs so that it's up under the column. Okay, now we're going to start the row. Remember we're knitting that first peg. Then we're purling two, knitting two. And we're always knitting the wedge pegs. Here's our knit two, and then our purl two. And then we knit two, because we now have, we've now decreased away the purls for those two columns. Then we're going to knit the two together to complete our wedge decrease. Okay. Then we're going to knit two and purl two and do this all the way around so you're actually at this point when you when you decrease you're going to be knitting the two knitting two together and knitting the two and then when you go around to do your regular row with no decrease you're going to be knitting six in these areas okay then you'll decrease again and then you're going to be knitting four Okay, and you'll see the progression. So what you're going to do is you're going to pause the video and you're going to decrease a row, do a row, decrease a row, do a row until you're down to where these last pearls are. Okay, and you're going to stop that process and I'm going to show you the next step, okay, so that we can complete the arch. It will look a little differently. You're going to do a stop just before the last three on the other version, but you're going to do the same process. It's going to look a little different on the smaller version, but generally, um, but not that much, okay? So pause the video, get your decreases down to where your last three um, pegs are, and you'll see them, okay, on either size, and then we're going to change up what we're doing, okay? 
we have managed to get all the way down and as you can see I'm to my pearls and then my knits okay and I'm basically down to my last decrease all right so what I want to do with my last decrease is I want to knit and then I want to purl one okay and you can just go in and wedge decrease everything down and this is where um, on the pattern I'm going to say wedge D it's going to be W D P wedge decrease with pearls okay is what it means so instead of knitting your two together you're going to purl your two together all right so now you want to move all your decrease stitches over and this will be your last decrease okay and what we're going to do is we're going to split it up to where what you have here is a beautiful um, cross X at the top and then like an arch that's going on with all your decreasing okay now that we've done that we're going to purl the two together on all the wedges rather than knit okay so purling those two together and then you're gonna purl one knit two purl one and then you're going to purl two together so on the written pattern it's going to be WDP wedge decreases with pearls regular wedge decrease is always a knit okay and then you're going to purl that single one there knit the two and then purl that single and then purl the two together and you will do the single row after your decrease and then you'll be ready to draw string off and we're going to do draw stringing a little differently than we normally do and I will explain how we're going to do that okay and at your two pearl one and then purl one and then knit one and you're back to your beginning now you're going to do a regular row like you normally do where you follow what you just did so you're going to purl four because we just purled we're stopping that column appearance is what we've just done and you're going to knit two then purl four and then knit two and then purl four knit two and purl four and you should be about ready to start your drawstring and I'm going to explain how you want to do that okay this is really not a hard pattern it's fairly simple okay there's purl and our one last knit okay now 
what you want to do is you want to cut you a little bit of a tail and what you want to do is you want to go around and you want to take all the purl stitches off first and normally I do every other one but we're going to do the purl stitches okay so you're going to skip that first peg you're going to just toss the bottom loop over it doesn't really matter you're drawstringing it and so you're just going to toss over pull through on all the purled stitches okay okay then you're going to skip those two because they're knit and you're going to draw string through all your purl stitches skip your knits String all your pearls. Skip your knits. Okay, because I want a really distinctive area that I know I can pull from. I'm going to skip these knits here and move directly over to here. Okay, so I'm not going to draw string those off. I'm going to draw string these knits off. Okay, so you're going to draw string your knit stitches off last, but you're going to skip those first two. What that's going to do is give you a very distinctive area of which strands you can pull first to get your bottom layer of stitches draw strong first and then your top layers. Okay, and our last ones. Okay, pull through. Now, what you see here is there is a break. Alright, so you see the last ones. You want to go above that, and there you know your purl stitches start. So you want to pull that first. Then you want to pull last of your stitches. Okay. Alrighty. And you see you have this arch you've created. Okay. And what I'm going to do to finish this off is to send it through and weave it so that it can be technically a reversible hat. You can you wear it either way on either side. Okay, so I'm going to send it through the middle. You can see it looks a little different, but it still has that arch appearance. Okay, now what I like to do is just send it through the loops around several times circularly, and that actually secures without having a knot, and that makes it reversible. Okay, that makes it where you can turn it inside out if you would like. And I just send it through around the 
shapes a couple of times. I've about done that and ready to cut my edge. And there you have it. Now this is the wrong side, as you can see. Okay. And this is the right side. A beautiful closure, as you can see. So plus sign in an X. All right. And I'm going to weave in my ends down here. And actually, this will probably fit a toddler to an adult because of the rib stitching. It has a spring to it, okay? But that is how you do the arched rib stitch hat on the X line.